Uh, my English name is Judith Sayers. My traditional name is Kakanasux, and I come from the Hoopachesset people that are here in the greater Alberni Valley, and we're part of the larger Nuchalnik Nation. This is where the water comes out uh, from the turbines back into the stream. So all of that has come down to the penstock, created the energy, and comes back out. Welcome to Green Energy Futures, your guide to the green energy revolution that's already underway. Judith Sayers is an accomplished woman. A lawyer by training, she was the chief of the Hoopachusset First Nation for 14 years and chief negotiator for 15. While serving as chief, she built a landmark project in BC, a run of river hydro project that's majority owned by a First Nation. The China Creek project was a reaction to a big natural gas plant that never ended up getting built in Port Alberni. But as a nation, we asked ourselves, well, how can we be part of the solution? so that we aren't creating um, greenhouse gas emissions. And we did our research. You know, we looked at all the different forms of renewable energy. We looked at the resources in our territory. And we felt because of the amount of uh, water we have in our territory, run of river would be the best type. They ended up building a 6.5 megawatt run of river project on China Creek. And they chose the location with care. We also chose China Creek because of the minimal impact on the environment. Uh, when China Creek reaches the, the Barclay Sound, the Alberni Inlet, there's a set of impassable falls. So none of our salmon come up here. We, we vetted all of our projects to make sure there were no sacred sites on any of them and there wasn't any on this site. A lot of care and attention was paid to the environmental impact of the development one of the goals of the Hoopachusset First Nation. Well, you know, we believe in the right of self-determination. Uh, and, you know, it's nice to be a partner with somebody in a business, but when you can drive it yourself, uh, we own 72.5% of this project, we get to set the standards. And through setting the standards of how we operate, we also manage our territory, the land, the water. And that was one of the great benefits of doing this. And indeed, the project not only helped put them in charge of minimizing impacts, it also helped build strong relations with the nearby community of Port Alberni, to whom they gave 5% ownership of the Run of River Company. Former Mayor Ken McRae says the project led to many good things. Well, that's just the start of lots of things, and we're doing uh, lots of adventures uh, now with the First Nations in this area. We have 10 First Nations on the west coast of Vancouver Island. Uh, Port Alberni is their headquarters for most of the First Nations and there's lots of joint ventures going out. So that was the first. So that helped? It really helped. China Creek was one of the first First Nations run of river projects in BC, but it wasn't the last. Well, right now 125 First Nations have projects out of the 203 in British Columbia. And that can be from royalty sharing to, you know, majority owners to joint ventures, different kinds of things and more First Nations want to develop. They're just excited about these kind of projects. A lot of them have been, you know, looking at the various types, um, bioenergy, biomass, uh, wind energy, solar, and some First Nations are building their second and third projects and it's, it was a good industry to get involved in because it's not you know, old companies that have been so entrenched in the industry it's hard to get in. On a good day like today, China Creek generates up to 6.5 megawatts, enough to power all of the homes in Port Alberni. And the project employs two Hoopachusset band members full-time with benefits. Current Hoopachusset Chief Steve Tatouche talks about the financial aspects of the project. Uh, well, we've got about 10 years more of debt to pay off uh, for, from our nation. and. Uh, I think once the debt's paid off, it's going to be a great project. It'll be uh, nothing but profit as long as the routine routine maintenance it costs are not too high. So I understand some years you can do fairly well. Some years it, 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 we could make uh, well up to almost to the two million uh, dollar range. Wow! And so other years 
you have good and bad years, I guess. You have some good years and bad years, and it's all weather dependent, and you, you can't really tell Mother Nature what to do. She kind of makes up her own decisions. It's a big commitment for the Hoopachessic. But Chief Tatouche says they do well in about seven years out of ten. While we were there, it was raining pretty hard, which is actually a pretty good thing if you own a run of river project. Well, Judith, thank you very much. I really appreciate you taking the time. Sure. Uh, and it's been fun uh, coming up here in the pouring rain. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I guess this is what it is. This is, yeah. <laughs> It's a good day uh, when our me members complain about rain now and say, well, we're making money. <laughs> In many ways, this is a story about the benefits of distributed electricity generation. It involves a First Nation, employs local people, and builds bridges between communities. To learn more about Judith Sayer's amazing story and more details on China Creek and First Nations Run of River, head to greenenergyfutures.ca. We've got a photo gallery, a podcast, and a blog. If you like this video, please subscribe to our channel and tell your friends. For Green Energy Futures, I'm David Dodge. If you like this episode, check out our episode called How We Built an Earthship, a Radically Sustainable Off-Grid Home on the Prairie. And if you're still listening, you should subscribe to our videos. We produce a new story every two weeks.